gamers, this is a cool device that I have been dying to see. Now, this is the ROG Nook from ASUS. And if you know anything about the Nook line, I have covered this for years on the channel, from the original Nook to some of the gaming Nooks for Intel. And when Intel last year said, hey, we're selling the Nook line, I was a bit scared. But when I found out it was ASUS, I had some relief because I know they do a lot of great PC products. So I'm excited to see what the ROG Nook brings to the table. Now, as you can see, clearly it looks like an ASUS device, right? All black, the ASUS logo in front. You, you can, of course, customize that logo, but it's really solid. Now, as I hold the device in my hand, you can see basically this is something you can carry around, but it is hefty. It's got some weight to it. It's not a light device, but it's something you can still put in your backpack and I'll say probably weighs about I'm about seven pounds or so, right? Something like that. I haven't actually weighed it. In front of the device, you've got full SD card slot, two USB type A, headphone jack. There is no type C in the front, which is a bit of a bummer. Power button, ROG in front, right? And then we go to the back of the device. We have two USB type A ports, says 10G, USB 2.0, two of those, 2.5 gigabyte ethernet port, Thunderbolt port, headphone jack, HDMI 2.1 and two display ports here. This is a DC input because this is the power brick. It's pretty massive as you'd expect, but I'm glad that this is actually external off the device. It also comes with a stand as well. Now the stand is pretty cool because even though I positioned the wrong way in some parts of this video, you will see it still holds pretty well. And you can also lay it flat on a table. Now there's tons of vents at the bottom, but because this is a Nook, which means this is a device you can easily open. And that shows you, just looking at the components, you can swap out, of course, your uh, RAM, as well as also your storage. Now RAM, you can go up to 64 gigabytes. I have 32 in my unit. I was, it also came with a one terabyte NVMe SSD. There are three NVMe slots to actually expand. So I added a two terabyte Kingston KC3000 which is great, I'm, I'm glad I can expand that. So I have enough storage for all the games I'm going to be testing out on this bad boy. Now the main question is how much does this new ROG Nook cost and what kind of performance are we getting? Well, there are two variants, a Culture 7 and a Culture 9. Now the Culture 7 comes with a 4060 with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM, while the Core Ultra 9 comes with a 4070 and with 512 storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now my unit here has 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. I went ahead, as I mentioned, and expanded that storage to um, two terabytes, and I'm going to expand my RAM to 64 so I can max this unit out pretty well. Now the pricing for these are very peculiar. You've got the Core Ultra 7 variant for 1,629, and the Core Ultra 9 for 2,199. That is pretty hefty for a Nook. So with that said, what kind of performance do we see here? So running benchmarks, the 3D mark, uh, uh, time spy, you can see the solid benchmark over 12,000, which is pretty great. And when you just look at some of the games that actually can run quite effectively, it is pretty high there. So I liked what I saw there with that, as well as also looking at the Geekbench score, some very great numbers for your CPU scores, also for the GPU score, right? So we know this, and we know the numbers we've gotten for the 4070, as well as also uh, the Core Ultra 9, but how does it perform for games with this device. So we tried to showcase a ton of games for you guys to see, and this device did not fail. Starting off with Call of Duty Warzone. Now Warzone, I was able to max out the settings on this, on this device, and my average frame rate was 114 frames, 120 frames per second. Being able to play quite comfortably here on this device was great. I love that, that I could get that kind of full performance. Now, next up was Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6, 60 FPS locked in, pretty solid ultra settings. The settings were maxed, so I was able to just play that quite effectively. Now, you're gonna see this constantly from this device as you go from game to game, a lot of great performance. Next up was a brand new game called First uh, Descendant. Now, First Descendant, I was able to get 50, 90, 60 frames per second. I just started playing the game, so that is not into the game as deep as possible, but the frame rates handle pretty well, and I'm sure I can tweak the settings to get uh, some more out of it, but the settings actually were pretty good. 
Over, moving over to Forza Horizon 5, we were able to get 71 to 80 frames per second. Looking at the settings there on screen, this is pretty solid. Again, could tweak it down a little bit more um, to get maybe higher frame rates, but I did like what I got here. Overwatch 2, that's a no-brainer. This did 173 frames to 180 frames per second uh, at the settings on screen, pretty much maxed it out, played quite comfortably with this. Do mind the fireworks because of course it's 4th of July weekend, but you get the idea here. Gaming on this really handles well. So I went to try a few others. Of course, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I ran the benchmarks, got about 123 frames per second. While playing, depending on the location, I got between 120 to 150 frames. Now the settings on this were max for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So gaming on this was quite good and effective. Another game I played was Hellblade 2. And this, I was able to get a solid 60 frames per second on this. I just wanted to see what this game would do on the system. A very, at least a very gorgeous looking game in terms of just the way the graphics look. And I like the performance on there. And then finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, here, I was able to tweak the performance. And you can see the settings on screen. Performance here was pretty good. There were some stuttering here and there, and I think I need to tweak it out, but about 76 to 80 frames per second on Cyberpunk 2077, which was nice to see. Now, one of the things you're gonna ask me next is what about temperatures? What kind of temperatures are I getting for something this compact, right? Right here, something this compact um, on my desk and also really small form factor. Now, in terms of temperatures, I was able to get uh, around 115 from the exhaust vent on the system. So when it comes to temperatures, um, temperatures ran a little bit up there uh, on the system. I was able to get about 77 to 80, uh, 80 or 85, depending, uh, degrees Celsius while gaming. It still uh, handled the games pretty well, uh, but something, of course, the fans will actually regulate. Now, speaking of fan noise, just take a listen. Fine noise was relatively good, and honestly, I think it sounded uh, just pretty low. In this environment while you're gaming, even with a speaker on, you would not hear it. Now, my whole setup that you're looking at here is a quick one I, I actually just cooked up, uh, but I want to give a shout out to ViewSonic for sending out their 2K OLED monitor. Name's on screen. Uh, this is about an 899 monitor. It's uh, 240 hertz, which allowed me to push the system as much as possible. Um, and certain games, I could not push it to, you know, to that range. I actually had to cut it down. But in terms of what I like about the monitor is the fact that it comes with remote control, which I can actually go through the settings. Um, it's also got some RGB lighting at the back. And this monitor rotates on either side. Uh, if you can put it in landscape or portrait, uh, and also ha can rotate from left to right on its base, which is nice. Now it's got built-in speakers, which are not great, but for game performance at, you know, with um, AMD FreeSync Premium, and of course G-Sync, uh, this is a really solid gaming monitor. I paired that up with my Asus Azot keyboard. That's an awesome keyboard. I also used the, um, the Pulse uh, mouse from uh, Kingston, and that mouse pad, can't remember the name, but it's got wireless charging. It's like 40 bucks or so. Pretty cool mouse pad that lights up uh, all together to kind of set up this whole thing that you see here. And that's something you can easily do with the Nook that will create a lot of space for you to create a full desktop, you know, whether it's minimalistic or however you want to set it up, that will make a lot of sense for you. And of course, you know, you can't forget the Nano Leaf uh, panels up there as well. Now, overall, how do I rate the ROG Nook? I really like it, I like the performance. But I gotta say, it is quite expensive. It is up there in price, especially if you're going for the 4070 uh, variant with the Core Ultra 9. Uh, now, you can get a bare bones version from uh, b and Photo that's priced at 1,399 for the 4060 and 1,899 for the 40. Uh, 70 with a Core Ultra 9. So that might be something a little bit better because then you can put your own storage and RAM configurations that you choose to, which will make a lot of sense for a lot of people. But if you're looking for a compact PC that will game extensively for you, the Asus ROG Nook is 
the Asus ROG Nook is pretty much that device for you. I definitely like it. I want to see some other variants and maybe even something that can help reduce the pricing cost, but I like the performance from it and I think it hits the mark. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.